this is a suit and all this other expensive stuff that he has and I'm like oh my god like why why he literally killed that for me he killed any momentum that he had with me the second he did that Check it out. okay why hello there YouTube my name is Alyssa and welcome back to this glorious YouTube channel. So, since it is the beginning of 2021, Happy New Year by the way, I thought it would be a great time to go over all of my favorite NJPW moments from 2020. Um, but before I do that, I just want to throw this out there. I got a new little like what ring light to go over my phone so that I can record on my phone instead of on my laptop. So let me know if you like the ring light, how is the lighting, is it good, is it bad? Let me know what you think of the camera quality too. Um, I'm really hoping you guys like it. Um, just let me know and I will see what I can do. But yeah. Um, so today I'm going to be going over some of my favorite moments from NJPW in 2020. So while I'm doing this, it's not gonna be like any sort of out of order thing. It's not gonna be random. I tried to rank them from my most favorite to my least favorite. My most favorite being number one, my least favorite being number 10. But they are all still from my, some of my favorite moments that I enjoyed. And as I talk about them, I'll go more in depth on why I thought they were cool or this or that. So to help me out, I brought my handy dandy notebook with me that has the list in it. That way I can kind of give myself a guide. So, number one is Naito to about in Jingu Stadium. So, Naito, of course, won back the two belts, the Intercontinental, the Intercontinental Championship, and the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at Jingu Stadium in August at Summer Struggle. We all know that he went up against Evil, which I'm not crazy about any of their matches. I'm not a big Evil person, but him winning them back made me very happy. I was I really enjoyed them finally giving him his moment to kind of shine and you know be able to just have the titles instead of it being like when he won them at Wrestle Kingdom where Kenta came down and kind of you know did the whole heel thing. I'm really glad that he got the opportunity to actually just kind of let it sink in that he had the titles and everything, especially it with it being at Tingu Stadium where, you know, they play a bunch of baseball, and Naito being a very big baseball fan, I would think that that was very cool for him to be able to do that there. Number two on this list is Jay getting the briefcase from Kota Ibushi. Now, I'm sure you all know that I'm a huge Jay fan, so this could sound very biased, but there's a reason why I really like this moment. Obviously, I'm a Jay fan, but really, I'm just really glad that they're not going to give Ibushi two big Wrestle Kingdom matches like that in a row, even though he is still going up against Naito on night one. I'm just glad that he's not going into it with the briefcase for a second time. I mean, he won in last year, had an okay match and whatnot, but I'm just kind of getting a little tired of them doing Naito and the Bushi because we've seen it 10,000 bazillion times. So I'm glad that it'll be switched up a bit maybe and we'll see Naito versus Jay for both titles and hopefully Jay wins or Naito keeps them. Honestly, either way, I don't mind. I like both guys. I think they're both talented. So we'll just cross our fingers either way. Um... Number three on this list is Haruma winning the Best of the Super Juniors. So, I actually enjoyed the match that he had with El Desperado at the finals. 
I thought it was good. I was very surprised, kind of, because even though I don't think Despy's bad or anything, Despy typically doesn't go as out. Like, he did, he, he went all out for this match, Despy. And Despy typically doesn't do that, but then again, I, I guess typically he has Kanamaru to kind of bounce off of. So he doesn't really have to, like, do as much. But I was very impressed. I thought it was a good match overall. And I am just really glad that after the injury and everything, Hiromu is getting his proper time to shine. And hopefully it means good things for him. I'm thinking... That they're going to kind of make him the face of the junior heavyweight division. Now that Osprey seems to be moving to the heavyweights. So hopefully that's the case. Um, and yeah. Number four. Sonata in the G1 finals. So I was very happy because obviously you guys know I like Sonata. Sonata is probably one of my favorite wrestlers. He is, if not in my top three in my top five of my favorite NJPW wrestlers. I think he's great. Or my favorite wrestlers overall, maybe even. But I think he's great. Um, he's super talented. Can do That man can do pretty much anything for his size. It is insanity. But yeah, I'm just really glad that now that he, even though he didn't win the finals, got in because I think he truly deserved it. Even though, and I was hoping he would win, but he didn't. And sadly... I was really kind of disappointed with the match that he had with Ibushi, not even because of him, but because Ibushi just wasn't really with it. I don't know what it was, but Ibushi wasn't really selling, he wasn't really doing much, uh, put Sonata over or anything, like he didn't really sell for Sonata at all. Even though Sonata wasn't going to win and Ibushi was going to win, Ibushi I feel like she'll, still should have shown him some respect in that way. Because that's what you do, you know. So hopefully Ibushi will work on that. And it will be better next time. Number five on this list. And now I'm sure you guys aren't going to be as surprised by this. Because you guys know that I love this. I thought this was great. Um, Juice's Return. I absolutely love the Juice's Return. I thought it was amazing. Um, the new character, everything, I, I, how much effort he was even putting into the matches when he came back, I thought he was great, I loved him. Now, before the G1 of this year, though, I wasn't the biggest fan, I couldn't really get behind him, but with the new gimmick and everything, he's really fun, I enjoy him, um, I appreciate how much effort he's putting in to the stick, and just going along with it, and I'm... He's having fun, which I appreciate. I always enjoy when people are having fun doing what they do. So, yeah. I'm excited to see more with the gimmick. Number six is Okan's debut. So, I thoroughly enjoyed Okan's debut. I thought that it was perfect. Like, I'm really glad that... He's there. I love the character that they gave him. I thought it was perfect. He's doing it so well. He is just going with it. And I absolutely love that. Like, I thought it was really cool when he came out. I was like, oh shit, that's Okan. Like, I hadn't seen him in Lord knows how long. So that I completely marked out for, like, the whole segment after the Osprey and Okan match. So, I really enjoyed it. I love Okan. Even though I'm not a, a huge Empire person right now, I hope to see more of him, and I hope to see him do great things. Number seven. Hiromu getting the Junior Heavyweight Championship from Osprey at Wrestle Kingdom 14. Yeah, I really enjoyed the match that Hiromu and Osprey put on. You guys know that I don't typically like Osprey, but I thought this was a good match from him and Hiromu. Their styles definitely mix together very well, and they definitely put a lot of effort into building the match as a whole, which I appreciate. Um, and I'm really glad, and it made sense after the fact that Osprey lost the title to Hiromu, which I'm really glad he did, because like I said, I think Hiromu... Finally getting what he, I'm really glad Hiromu is finally getting what he deserves. 
you know, I really hope that the, this means that they're going to make him the face of the junior heavyweight division, which could be a very good thing or a very bad thing, obviously, with the injury. But I think he deserves it, and I'm really glad to see that they're doing it. And I'm really glad to see that he was able to come back and do it and just do it flawlessly. So number eight is... Zack Sabre Jr. versus Sonata from the G1 this year, or in last year. Now, um, I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was a great match. I really love seeing these two work together. Um, they always put on fantastic matches. Their styles go together super well. So do their personalities, it seems like. Um, which I genuinely appreciate. It makes me very happy. And you can tell that when they're together in the ring, especially, they're having so much fun. Which, like I always say, I really enjoy people having fun like that together, especially in the ring. And, you know, with them having such similar technical styles, it's always a great time with them being both such good technical wrestlers too like those two could go forever and it'd be okay with me because i just love it there's nothing you can do about it i just absolutely love it so number nine is john moxley versus minoru suzuki um so not only did I think the match was good, but I also really enjoyed the build-up to this. The match probably isn't overall a favorite, but I really thought that for what it was and everything, it deserved to be on this list. Because I think that overall it was a very cool moment to see someone, especially like Moxley with his character, kind of be so accepted by Minoru Suzuki. Quickly going back to what I was saying, that I really enjoyed it overall because I liked the build up. You could tell that they were having fun and they were just kind of going with it. Um, I know that I know that when I saw that they were doing this match, I like freaked out because I thought it was gonna be pretty damn good because they both have very similar hard hitting slash deathmatchy styles. You know, Suzuki literally was fucking nuts growing or in wrestling for the longest time. <laughs> um, and so I was like, this is going to be an interesting match. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I know that it was probably a really cool moment for Moxley too. Because he had already said previously that one of the matches that he had always watched from Japan was Suzuki versus someone. I can't remember who exactly it is right now, but maybe I'll get back to you guys on that one later. Um, but no, I thought that it was a cool moment. I was like, I'm super excited about this. And I thought it was a good match. I really appreciated it. For what it was and you could tell that especially when they were in the match with the slaps and everything that they were doing it was just you could tell that they were having major amounts of fun and i was like yes as you should be so last but not least on this list number 10 is osprey's heel turn so like i said with okan i was i completely marked out for this moment, like, I loved it. I really thought that it was gonna end up being very interesting because Osprey is technically a real life fucking asshole. So, you know, I was like, oh, ooh, like, this could work. And I was really excited. I was like, yeah, like, maybe I can get behind this. Because you guys know that I don't typically get on behind a lot of Osprey's work. I mean, he's a good wrestler. I always have been like he's a great wrestler but it's just very hard for me to get behind the character and everything that comes along with it so i just haven't ever really been like a huge fan so i'd see that maybe he was going to do something different and 
you know, maybe kind of commit, you know. He did the typical heel thing. He turned on Okada and he was like, you held me back. And so I was like, oh shit, like, he really gonna do this? And then that next pay-per-view happened. You guys know what pay-per-view I'm talking about. I bet you. Where he came out. Okay, this man came out and started talking about his expensive ass champagne, his expensive ass watch, his expensive ass suit, and all this other expensive stuff that he has. And I'm like, oh my god. Like, why? Why? He literally killed that for me. He killed any momentum that he had with me the second he did that. Because you can ask anyone else the initial moment. I did not stop talking about until like two or so days after it happened. I was really excited. It was about the Empire and everything because I thought it was going to be something different. I was like, yes, something different. Let's go. And then he did that. And I was like, of course he would. Of course you would. Why wouldn't you do that? I guess it's time to end this video before I go on a whole other tangent. Um, so if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you like my face, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, let me know what some of your favorite NJPW moments were from 2020. I really am curious. I really want to know. And yeah. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye. -bye.